Good morning and thank you on behalf of our project partners for having us here today. My name is Lisa Donaldson and I'm the project manager on the What Works and Why project. Um, there are many national and international reports that look at the challenges facing us in uh, higher education, but also the potential for technology enhanced learning. And uh, staff development is seen as the key to this. So it's, we wanted to provide opportunities for continuing professional development so that our teachers can uh, work together, they can work smarter, they can work more collaboratively, and most importantly, they can make better use of technology enhanced learning approaches. So our project team here of DCU, AIT, uh, Dundalk and Maynooth University, what we look to do is to build digital literacy and engagement for both students and teachers by looking at the um, question what works and why from a discipline specific context. So what we were really seeking to do was to change mindsets as well as to augment skill sets. So to give you a brief overview of the project, there were really three main strands to what works and why. Um, firstly, that was the development of continuing professional development through workshops, seminars and drop-in clinics. And these started very early in January and in fact are still continuing. We have a rescheduled one next week. Um, but also were focused on our, te our tell week, which was, excuse me, March 7th to 11th. The second string to the What Works and Why project was the supporting of TEL innovation projects. So we funded a number of projects across the uh, participating institutions. And the third element of the project was to support teaching groups, which are essentially peer mentoring circles. Um, we're very pleased with uh, what we've managed to achieve within a relatively short space of time. We've in fact over delivered on what our original proposal was, which to have, was to have 20 development events and eight peer mentoring circles and 10 tele-innovation projects. So that's quite the significant achievement over the six month period. What I want to do is share with you briefly um, the student voice and we thought it was important to capture the student voice um, at the beginning of the project to help inform our thinking as regards development. Um, I'm just going to play you a small part of this. The students were asked a question here as regards their use of technologies and what technologies they see being used in the classroom. PowerPoints, um, Microsoft Word, videos, YouTube. Uh, and I find it on business, so we use a lot of like translating software, um, Prezi's presentations, PowerPoint, um, and just kind of YouTube as well for videos. Uh, by the lectures, it's mainly PowerPoint slides that I see them using, and some of them use a, a drawing pad kind of thing for drawing, and that's it. That's it. In the classrooms, mainly PowerPoint. Um, to be honest, that's about as all I can remember, and some places they don't even have that. PowerPoints, and then the odd time is uh, smart technology, um, so smart boards uh, for using in primary schools. So we get we get briefed on that quite a lot. How to use the smart board? Uh, generally, it's just PowerPoint presentations. Um. I think I'll pause there. I think can you see a, a general theme no, coming mind. through? This website. Right, so obviously for us then, it was important that we supported more innovative use of technology enhanced learning tools to better support our students who are using more than PowerPoint in their day-to-day -day lives. Um, as a result of that, we developed a number of workshops, which are, as I said, still ongoing. We um, asked our lecturers to come to us to Vi to, to attend the workshops. We went to them with drop-in clinics. We developed tabletop cards, which were placed in communal areas, <coughs> supporting some, or highlighting the features of some of the tools that we were highlighting in the workshops. So we went to them and, and, and they came to us, and, and that's an initiative that's ongoing. But just speaking of students, we also developed these tabletop cards for students as well, highlighting some of the tools that were particularly relevant to them, and some of those were coming out of the projects, the tele-innovation projects that we were actually funding. So just 
briefly to speak about the projects. We had a number of different projects, some very exciting results coming out of them that unfortunately we don't have time to go through today. But we had projects, and you can see that they're very focused on discipline-specific areas. We've had screencasts and quizzes being developed within uh, computing, use of different uh, tools like WebWorks and engineering, upgrading of uh, digital media skills in the library. But as you can see, there's a wealth of other projects that we have supported all of them very focused on discipline specific areas and looking at technology enhanced learning use within those disciplines. A full list of all of the projects and in fact all of the outputs from the What Works and Why project is available on whatworksandwhy.ie. The second strand I mentioned was teaching groups which are effectively peer mentoring circles. So these were by the teachers and for the teachers and they were large scale as well as small scale events. Um, so this is an example of a teaching group taking place within computing where they are, use some very exciting new tools um, as, and for uh, helping programming robotics to Lego Mindstorms. Very interesting materials coming out of there. We've looked at, there's a number of teaching groups that we've supported within the education field, looking at ePortfolios and MOOCs. We have looked at supporting the um, teaching group within the School of Business, which are looking at live polling and other ways to interact with students besides PowerPoint within the classrooms. Um, but as you can see, again, there's a wealth of other um, teaching groups that we have supported, as well as inter-institutional groups, where a, a number of our institutions have come together to share expertise. And that's the goal behind it, is to share expertise. Um, Heinrich's 2013 research on the role of um, peer mentoring groups on scaffolding pedagogical change was, was, was really behind this. So I mentioned the, the, the last round, the Tell Week workshops. Again, this is just a small snapshot of some of the workshops and seminars that we um, put on across the participating institutions. So in looking at those workshops, we've had over 160 to date, and there's still um, some numbers to add to that, attend those workshops and events. And we've started the evaluation of um, those workshops based on the impact evaluation framework by Coolbear and Hinton. And that looks at reach, impact and practice, impact on learners, and impact on the project teams themselves. So, at the moment, as I say, we're at the early stages of collecting uh, information. It's very much qualitative data that we have at the moment. But as you can see on screen, it's coming back as really, really positive that it's had a big impact on the practice of those that got involved with the <coughs> events. And this is particularly important to us when we're looking at the sustainability and going forward of, of what we have started here with the What Works and Why project. Do you intend to investigate further something that you've learned as part of the project? And over 90% of those who've responded to date have said yes. So I think that's key to what we're trying to do here. Um, to look at the impact of the projects themselves, we've produced a lot, or the, the groups have produced a lot of shareable outputs. And they're, they're very shareable across our partner institutions, as well as in the broader context. So they may be, I'm just picking a couple of examples, it can be quizzes and screencasts. I know there's videos in uh, teaching um, that's available in, in, sorry, videos of nursing um, teaching that's going to be available shortly. But also what each project and teaching group have produced is a briefing guide. And that they're available and more are going to be posted to the What Works and Why website. And what they're simply doing is providing a, an overview of what they've done, their approach, and their recommendations should anybody else be looking to introduce something similar. So there's a great wealth of knowledge there to be shared. And speaking to sustainability, the teaching groups that are now embedded in the faculties, um, the, te the te technology evangelists that we are see coming out of there, we expect that to continue, the, the continue ongoing and enhance the sustainability of the project beyond the six months. Thanks, Lisa. Um, <clears throat> so 
Just addressing some of the feedback that we got from the panel the first time around, you asked us, you, you, uh, we specifically chose a discipline-based approach rather than a thematic approach to do this, and you warned us of the pitfalls, quite rightfully so. So what we had done was we'd made sure that we had specific, discipline-specific supports there. We had regular reporting going on, regular conversations going on uh, between the various teaching groups, and we also made sure the teaching groups were talking to one another. Um, the student voice was very, very important to us. Lisa alluded to a video earlier on, uh, but also what we were able to do was, in, in a lot of the teaching innovation projects, students directly participated and inputted in, into them. Um, so, the local and national impact. So, we're, uh, I'm dividing it into two particular um, two particular areas. The local impact, let's just talk about within the institutions. This money, this project created a huge buzz within our institutions at a local level. What we've done, because we went with the discipline-based approach, um, we got people thinking and talking about teaching. We got them thinking, not as individuals, and not talking as individuals, but talking within groups, within their own disciplines. And that had a huge knock-on effect. Now, there's no doubt time was an issue. Absolutely, the, the time restrictions, and everybody's mentioned it. But trying to twist that, that positive or that negative into a positive, the optimist for me says we've laid the foundations, we've sown a seed for what works and why too. That, that's simply the way we see it. Because rather than trying to see all the negatives that we could have done this, we could have done that. As Lisa said, we over delivered as a section, uh, as, a, as a project as a whole. But we could have done so much more. We w want to do so much more. Uh, as, a, as a national impact, uh, just looking at the social media side of things, we set up a Twitter uh, group, a Twitter hashtag to follow, with over 200 tweets and nearly 400 followers. Now at this stage, we've got a significant following. That will continue beyond the project. The website has had over 2,000 views to it, and this is the hub that shares all of these shareable outputs, examples of which you have in, in front of you. Um, from conference presentations, EdTech was mentioned earlier on, not only did we have several presentations from across the partners uh, presenting at the conference, we had loads of people involved in the projects that just came to attend, that hadn't attended before, and that to me was a key output of the project. Um, we had specific <coughs> discipline ones in Atlone, there's a science education one, uh, we've been accepted to, to present at the ALT conference, which is a, a, a very highly respected one in the UK, and again, taking examples, uh, my apologies, I think it's at loan again, uh, have put in a submission for a DECIDA conference. So it's beyond the Irish community is where we're having impact. And these are peer reviewed. So it's not Mickey Mouse stuff that we're presenting by any stretch of the imagination. The key thing for us is that integration, and the literature tells us this, integration of tell in pedagogically sound ways, and that's, that's the key thing. We're not leading with the technology, we're leading with pedagogy has to be embedded in course design. And the tight time frame of this project made that hard to, uh, to measure the impact. But again, I go back to the, the thing later on, turning it on, on its side. We've sown the seed. We've sown a seed with these projects. And we're going to see this integrated in with all the teaching and learning projects. We're going to see this impact next semester and the semester afterwards, because all the videos we created, the screencasts were mentioned earlier on and other ones, all quizzes, all the interactive teaching techniques our teaching groups have learned um, will be implemented next semester. We touch all the disciplines, the four corners. As I say, we have examples from all of the partners um, touching science and business and computing and nursing. But what happens now is the business guys can talk to the science guys and the computing guys and so on. Um, so I'm very confident that we will, uh, with this seed, that it will grow into so much more. What we found is that th this project has uh, given, allowed people to, to have critical reflection and have that stimuli to do so much more. And that, if, if, if nothing else, it's, it's brilliant. What we have done here, we have came together as, as uh, a consortium of institutions through the form with this common goal. I'm getting the timing here now. So um, upon reflection, I've, I've three things really to, to, to put out. Uh, the, what we said we deliver versus what we actually delivered. Lisa touched on it earlier on. We said we would have 20 events, we had 34. We said we would have eight teaching groups, we had 15. We said we would have 10 innovative projects, we had 26. 
Now, I still believe we were ambitious in the targets we set, considering all the, the factors against us, but we over-delivered because of the staff in each one of the institutions. The evaluation data is very, very positive coming back. And, and, and for me, that's, that says it all. As Lisa said, over 90% of the, uh, the respondents so far said, yes, we will do something else. We use a framework. We didn't just lash out the happy sheets. We use the Cool Bear framework, measuring the impact on the, the teacher, the impact on the student, the impact on the team. And, and that's how we, we structured our evaluations. Looking forward, greater flexibility of time. We've all said this, right? Uh, looking forward, what I see coming out of this is now the projects that started in Athlon can be spread to Dundalk, can be spread to DCU, can be spread to Maynooth, right? Already we have, and the academic writing is, is uh, one that's already an institutional program, that's, or uh, sorry, an inter-institutional collaboration that's doing very well. But I see the individual projects, the nursing skills, that can easily go from um, Dundalk out to the, the three partners, uh, three other partners. The uh, maths ones, that can easily go and spread. So, so looking forward, we've only sown the seed. I genuinely believe that it will be a super project for us. I, I stood before you here, whatever, seven months ago, and I said uh, we wanted to change a mindset, not just a skill set. And I firmly believe that we've started to do this with this project. And, and it couldn't have happened without the partners. We were four individual islands but brought together uh, as a common goal. I see the next stage, the what works and why too, is where more inter institutional collaboration happens. But as I say, the seed has been sown. Thank you.